What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are going to be reviewing TDN's weekly mock draft and continuing it for a round number two. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys of course for supporting the channel. We just got over 5,000 subscribers so we're already uptaking to 5,100 which is awesome. I have you guys to thank for that. So without further ado, let's get right into this and there is a little bit of a caveat that we'll have to go over in about round pick, well not round, pick 20 but We'll get there. We'll cross that bridge when we have to. Let's go off. Let's look at number one overall. You've got Detroit Lions going Bryce Young. For me, I think this is the must move for the franchise. I think that is going to be what you do need to go with. You're aiming that way. Quarterback is certainly a position I want to go after. I mean, the defense definitely needs help 100%. But when you're sitting at number one overall, you have that second, second round pick. There's just a lot more draft capital that you can use so that you can end up getting and elevating that defense with more pieces that you're able to acquire. So Bryce Young, it's the biggest value position. It's a position you definitely need. And it's a player who's a really damn good guy to fit in your system. Pair him back up with JMO when he's healthy. And then number two, you got the Texans going Will Anderson Jr. here. Uh, I personally think, like, I love Will Anderson, but... I don't think the gap is as large as people think between him and other edge rushers in this class. And when you do need a quarterback, that's a position you need to hone in on. So going CJ Stroud to me probably is a must. That will, that said, I don't have full confidence that CJ is going to be the franchise guy for any team. Uh, this quarterback class doesn't look like there's a guarantee at any franchise quarterback position. Granted, the 2020 class seemed like it was a guarantee, or 2021 class seemed like it was a guarantee. And then obviously we're seeing right now not so much, but again, gut feeling, it's very tough to think anybody but Bryce Young could be a franchise guy, but it's worth taking a shot at. Again, you're usually here in the top. You also have your picks later on to be able to select these guys. So um, the draft order is going to be a little bit different from this because the fact this was made before Monday Night Football and before the trade deadline, which we'll get to in a second. But if the Texans go well, Anderson Jr., CJ Stroud for the Carolina Panthers seems to be the perfect move. Now, a lot of people want to go Matt Corral. And again, that's my high school quarterback. I played with Matt. Like, I would love to see him have success. I don't have the confidence in him being a top 32 quarterback in the NFL, in the world. Because uh, again, love him to death. But I just don't know if his skill set translates properly versus somebody who is like CJ Stroud, who has been able to at least put, you know, foot to turf and just been able to produce some crazy numbers and be able to produce some crazy success. Granted, Ohio State offense has proven to be very difficult to translate to the NFL, as we've seen through the past two quarterbacks drafted highly, but CJ might be a different story. We'll see about that. Um, this pick, obviously you guys know that I am a Steelers fan. This one pisses me off. So it's Broderick Jones. I would just say go watch the Missouri game, and this is something that I watched with you guys over my Discord, so check it out. Uh, you know, I would love to talk to you guys. I do want to do more stuff over there, but... Broderick Jones, man, I mean, he has a lot of really good games, but versus Isaiah McGuire, who is a top 10 player to me in the class, again, it's number 303 on NFL Mock Draft Database's big board, but besides my disgruntlements there, I would say Broderick Jones has had some incredible games, and he's been a very, very consistent pass blocker. He only let up one pressure technically versus McGuire, but he lost a lot of reps. I would not want the Steelers to get Broderick Jones unless they're later on. Unless it's like the second round or the late first, I would say don't get Broderick Jones. There's other players like Peter Skaronsky. There's other players like Javon Foster who just, they have higher upside or they're a better fit or they have a better floor. Like there's just, in my opinion, better tackles than Broderick Jones. And I'm not trying to shit on Broderick here. Again, I think he's a first round talent for sure, but I'm trying to just display the nuances where it's like, I wouldn't want him in the top five. I definitely wouldn't. So, uh, Brother Jones at four, definitely a miss for me. Jalen Carter for the Jaguars is an absolute must if he's there. For me, again, if I'm the Steelers, I'm going Jalen Carter 10 out of 10 times. His talent is just way too good to pass on. But uh, we'll see with this mock draft in general. Like, again, I don't want to say anything that's a personal attack on anybody because I do think that, you know, if you get a position, you know, I'm going to respect it. But... The more I look at stuff like TDN mock drafts, the more I look at stuff like e even ESPN mock drafts, um, I mean, especially the draft network, I have no idea why the hell these people are employed. 
just honestly there it's the you'll see you'll see very soon uh, some of these picks are just absolutely atrocious and it just hurts me as someone who puts in a lot of time who cares genuinely about the product that I give out to you guys because I want it to be good I want you guys to not consume bullshit um, this is bullshit majority of this draft is gonna be bullshit like Broderick Jones in the top five but um, you'll see and I just want to put that out there right now because you'll see me get heated. I like to get a little bit heated because I have genuine passion for this stuff. The people who do this have absolutely zero passion, and it disgusts me. But we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, Keely Ringo is here, number six for the Vegas Raiders. Uh, he's a damn good player. I would say be careful because he has let up over 200 yards already this year. That's not a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think that it's like a big negative on him, but... We'll talk about a player uh, in the next round, and y'all already know which corner I'm going to be talking about. I did a stat update last night. I think he let up 38 yards in game one. He's let up 49 all year long, including that game. He's let up 11 yards since, and he started every almost every single game. We'll talk about him soon. But Keely Ringo, he is a damn good player. I do like him a lot. There's no shame going to be going into taking him. I will just say... You can save $110 million by cutting Derek Carr. So probably getting a new quarterback probably be the best move. You know, save money, put it elsewhere, put it into corners, put it into offensive line, and then be able to just say, I mean, I would trade back from six at this point because, you know, if you guys haven't seen the Georgia-Kentucky game, ugh, not too bueno. But, you know, I just think that's the best route for the team. We might even address that in round two. Uh, Houston Texans going Quentin Johnston here. Uh, you guys will see because of like Cleveland's pick right here, they're actually deeper. They're like later on by like a couple spots in the mock draft because of the fact that they won on Monday night. But given the fact that I didn't see much of a difference between like what would happen if they were there or here, I decided to continue sticking to this mock draft order. Uh, Buccaneers going Miles Murphy, do that myself. This is what I want to talk about. It's just stuff like this when you don't actually watch college football. It, it just doesn't make sense. You're forcing a pick and you know, you trade up for a, a potential one-of-one one player in Jordan Davis, that size, athleticism combination. You know, it's... Un, it, I just don't understand why the hell you'd go after someone like Gervon. And I like Gervon a lot. I've been Gervon, one of Gervon's fanboys for a while, and I don't get it. I don't. He hasn't performed very well this season at all. He's super inconsistent. He doesn't even fit the mold that how he's going to want. You want a freak at that position. You're replacing Fletcher Cox and Javon Hargrave. Your Vaughn Dexter very well might be a defensive end. And if you want to go after another Milton Williams style player, go for it. But in the top 10, like really, that's where you're supposed to get the all-stars. Those true home run hitters. And you're getting a defensive tag. Like if you got Breesy, at least I'd be like, okay, well, you know what? He has some crazy pass rush moves. That's a better replacement for Javon Hargrave. This is just bad journalism. It's someone who just saw a defensive line and just clicked on it. And I swear to God, I feel like that's it. I don't understand. I seriously don't. There's better defensive tackles in the second round than Gervon Dexter at this moment. Like, especially value-wise. I don't get it. And it is a true shame to see that, you know, these people are the ones making these mock drafts for all you guys to consume to where you guys think that Gervon Dexter is a top 10 player in the class. I mean, hell, why would you draft a defensive tackle in the top 10 if... You know, you didn't need to. Like, if he's not that good, why would you draft him there? And the simple fact is they shouldn't. Uh, Bracey here for the Seahawks. I don't think it's a bad pick because I do understand the public hype around him. But I'm just not high on him. Has a lot of injury concerns. It's inconsistent. He got, I think, a 46 PFF grade the, a couple weeks ago, if not last week. So, you know, there is legitimate concern with Brian Bracey. I do want to shout that out. Just, you know... He's not a home run hit, but he's a hell of a lot better of a selection at this spot than Gervon Dexter because of the ceiling that we have seen. And that's me because I actually still have Gervon above Brian Breesey, but I understand when you have, like, uh, honestly, it's probably not for long. Gervon's been very disappointing to me, but like when you've seen the ceiling, you can take the ceiling. The Seahawks, I wouldn't recommend it, but I'm not going to absolutely drop a bomb on it the way Gervon Dexter at number nine is. And you guys will see, there's some pretty, like number 13, and I'm glad. I have it specifically cut off so that I can see what's coming up next without you guys. Number 13 is going to be like, I am going to lose my shit. So just, just a heads up for you guys if you guys want to skip forward a couple picks. 
Um, Joey Porter, though, great pick for the Cardinals. I think that he's just super versatile. He's become much more balanced this year. Uh, he's my number one corner in the draft, and he has great size, has great speed, great against the run. So you really can't go wrong with him. The Bears getting Jackson Smith and Jigba here. Oh, good. I didn't get to let you guys see Henry Toto. Oh, spoiled it. Um, Jack Smith and Jigba to the Bears. He's a good weapon. Again, I think now that you have Claypool on the outside, Darnell Mooney, he's a good complement to them, so I wouldn't really blame it. I know that this was made before Chase Claypool, but I still wouldn't shame them if they did it after because now you have a really damn good core because I think that he is a very good complement, uh, complementary wide receiver. Not a night wide receiver one, but a good wide receiver too, and that's exactly what he's going to be. And then here we go. Here comes the shit show. Um, the Detroit Lions selecting Henry Tioto. Again, I don't know if Keith watches tape based on the fact that he puts him here. I don't know if maybe he watches highlight reels, and I hope to God he doesn't. And I hope to God I'm wrong. Maybe he just messed up. Because there's no way in freaking hell that Henry Teoteo deserves to be in this mention at all. I don't think that he should be in the top 130, let alone top 13. Henry Teoteo is afraid of contact. He runs away from blockers who are trying to engage him. He just simply does not have that tenacity that you're looking for. And it's a real reason why I don't really think Alabama's defense is top tier. He's one of the primary concerns that I have. You know, he started having some good flashes, but the fact is you watch the game, you watch every rep he takes. He does not play football at an NFL level. I am genuinely concerned whether he should be drafted or not. And you have him here at pick 13. It's not a second round pick where it's like, okay, I think that he's a lower, lower pick. This is pick 15 and above where you have a low value position. This guy needs to be God tier. Like Jameen Davis, who tested in the four threes, went at like pick 18. And yeah, Jameen Davis has his problems. But he's a hell of a lot better than this guy. I digress. Um, you guys know, like I have a passion for this stuff. If you guys do see there's something under me, you guys can see my big board right there. I want you guys to be able to check in on it. It's not, again, fully, fully up to date. There's still guys that need to be moved around here and there, but... 99% of it is pretty damn accurate and up to date with how I feel. So you guys still get to see in my top 20 where I have guys and where I should put them. Because uh, again, I wanted to tell you guys, I do like Broderick Jones. He's there at number 19. I'm not trying to crap on him. Then we got the Packers going Jordan Addison. I think that's an excellent option for the team. Of course, I don't know if they purposely did this, but Will Levis fell to the Colts. I think that's a very good option. Not like your team can get much worse. So I am a big fan of that. The Patriots going Tyree Wilson. I'm not against it at all. You know, again, he's a freakish build, 6'6", 275. He has those high flash plays. Bill Belichick usually gets the best out of his players, so I think this is a very good option for him. And then we got Washington Commanders going Trent Simpson. I'm perfectly fine with it. Now, if the Lions went Trent Simpson at 13, I'd be like, okay, a little bit rich for a linebacker, but I don't mind because it's a good position. Like, he's a good player at a position of need. So, you know, again... This is why, like, I put a lot of energy into getting actual, like, logical value for you guys. Um, looking at stuff like that happen is, like, it really does hurt because people put in applications for these sites who have a lot better qualifications and know a lot more than the guys who are writing and making money off of scamming us as a community. Cincinnati Bengals and going Cam Smith out of South Carolina. Uh, he's a very good player. I think that it's a very good position to target with Eli Apple going. I used to be against it, but... That's because of the fact that I was like, okay, well, you just got two DBs last year. Understand that Eli Apple's not even going to be there. Not that he does much in the first place. Um, it gives justification for the pick. So I'm fine with it. Atlanta going Bijan, I do know that this would be a very popular pick within the community. My buddy Camarino is a big Atlanta Falcons reporter on Twitter. So go give him a shout out. He actually joined us for a seven round mock last year. And I forgot. I don't think we got any of the guys that um, Atlanta targeted, but it's still a really good time. And he's awesome. Like he's a good guy. He sometimes spreads out wrong information, but I'm sure that I don't think that he is the one who reports it. He's just reporting what he hears. So again, can't really fault him for just trying to inform us of stuff that's going on. Cause you know, it's a lot of work. He's, he's not even my age. So got to give him a quick shout out right there. So this is what I got to talk about. This is obviously before the trade. And for me, I actually took this upon myself, and we'll review it in a second. Um, 
to make this, I actually started altering um, a couple picks here. And this one, obviously, it's Michael Mayer. Um, I'm not going to do that for the Broncos because they just got Greg Dolchich and he's been doing very well. So if I'm in the shoes of the Broncos, I'm definitely not going Michael Mayer. And I decided to go after an offensive lineman. And that's something that I've been doing quite a bit. I think Russell Wilson needs protection. It's kind of sad that like the one time that the Seahawks have protection, he's not there. I think that's going to be your best return on your investment. So being able to do that is going to be your best case scenario. So I chose Paris Johnson and we'll go over it again, but I had to address it because of the fact that this is out of date. Uh, Chargers going Darnell Washington. I don't fully understand the, the super hype on him. I have him as a late second, early third, which I mean, I think honestly the Chargers could wait to another round. He's six foot seven uh, and he's a monster, but He's not very athletic. It's going to be weird because he's either going to be absolutely dominant because no one can contest his size, or he's just going to be a kind of a guy who might convert to offensive tackle. Like, I don't know. But, I mean, hey, if you want to take a shot on him, take a shot. But I'm not one who's going to do that. Jordan Battle, to me, is kind of lackluster. He makes some splash plays here and there, but overall his game is pretty mid. And to me, I think he's deserving of a fourth-round grade. Like, he just doesn't surprise me in anything. And in the NFL, you just can't be consistently solid. You have to make big-time plays more often than not. And I feel like he's more of a liability than an asset in the NFL, especially for a team where you do have two safeties on contract. So just talking about the player and the value, not to mention the fit. The fit's awful. Like, you just paid Quandre Diggs. You have Jamal Adams there. Like, there's just no reason to go after Jordan Battle. It really doesn't make sense. It's really a shame to put my mock drafts against this stuff like this. And I make mistakes all the time. That's why I ask you guys for feedback, because I want to continue week after week shaving down my mock drafts, shaving down the mistakes until we make really damn good mock drafts. And it's pretty obvious. These guys do it, like, once every three weeks. They're not listening. They're not listening. They're not looking at the rosters. They're not looking at anything. And it's really embarrassing. Uh, So, yeah, I already took Paris Johnson, so we'll address that in a second. But the Jets, if they do go Paris Johnson, would be a great move. I ended up going Peter Skaronski because it's the next best tackle. So I like him. Whoop-de-doo. Nothing crazy. So, uh, yeah, we just swapped out the player here. And uh, Peter Skaronski gets taken later in this, and we just swapped him out with another tackle who I think is still worthy of this pick. Uh, Ravens going Christian Gonzalez, as you guys can see by my board. um, I do have Christian Gonzalez there at pick 26 or at 26 overall, so I think he's so totally worth it. Isaiah Foskey is next, and I cannot get on board with him at all. I can't. Uh, I've watched him five times, and I'm not over-exaggerating when I say five times. I've rewatched him five times, year after year after year, game after game. And I watched the one game where I was like, oh, wow, he looks a lot better. So that was versus BYU. That was one of my games I rewatched with him. He's not good. I'm sorry. I'm going to call it right now. I don't think he's good. There's better players at that same exact size who just play so much better. And he's just not one of them. I just don't believe it. Uh, Cowboys going Brian Branch. I think it's a phenomenal move. DB, you can place him anywhere. And he's from Alabama. You guys have already had success with an Alabama DB and Trevon Diggs. I like it. Um, The Giants going Hendon Hooker. Now, I don't know about this. I obviously have Hedden Hooker, so it's the quarterback, quarterback's been drafted in the way that I have um, them ranked right now. But the Giants going Hendon Hooker? Like, I don't know how much of an upgrade that is over Daniel Jones. Like You can spend that pick on a linebacker on a corner. Like You can spend it on a guard if you want to. Like There's just better positions to target than Hendon Hooker. But I don't hate it. I understand it. I just don't think it's the optimal pick for the team. I would just try to make the team better and then have Daniel Jones in there and just pray that it works because I just don't know if Hendon Hooker at 25 years old is going to be able to uplift the franchise to a championship level. Pick number 28, the Titans going Kayshawn Butte. Uh, again, I don't know if he comes out. He's a really damn good talent, has drop issues. My only issue with Kayshawn is I have not seen progression. It's been the same Kayshawn Butte year after year Of course, he got injured last year, but he just hasn't improved in my mind. And that's very scary because you've had over a year, almost, well, he's had about a year of just training himself to get back, to get better, and he's just not better. So that's where I'm at with that. 
Um, Vikings then going Peter Skaronski. I just said I took him earlier. I swapped this out with Anton Harrison, who I think is a pretty solid comp. Like, it's a pretty solid swap for the two. So I like it. Christopher Smith for the Bills. I think safety is definitely a really good position to target for them. Uh, and Christopher Smith's a good guy. Like, I'm not going to complain about that. And then the Eagles getting Jameer Gibbs. I've heard some rumors about, um, I'm tripping, Alvin Kamara. But, you know, it's not a bad position at all. I do know that Howie is sem- somewhat interested in that running back position. Now, would I take one at 31? Probably not, because I don't know how many running backs I would take in the second. But without further ado, let's actually kick into this. I'm going to bring... So we'll, we'll quickly look at the guys who are still on the board from my own big board. And if you guys are wondering why I'm looking over here, not directly at you, that's where I have my content. So I have Isaiah McGuire here still. Love him. Um, this man right here, my God, he's an absolute freak. Jalen Jones, I've fallen in love with him even more statistically i loved him with the eye test but this dude just check it out yourself i mean he's let up literally 49 year, uh, yards all year long jared verse still on the board P, uh, javon foster still on the board felix anu dk uzama who i've been a very recent big fan of still on the board garrett williams i heard that he might be out for the year um still on the board antonio johnson like will mcdonald majority of my guys well it just shows you where like this guy's head's at uh, Jacoby Winman, I know I'm higher than most people on him. Voorhees, Carter. There's a lot of guys. Tyree Stevenson, JL Skinner, Sam Laporta, BJ Ojolari. So there's a lot of guys. And since I announced them to you, I'm going to bring the board down just so you can see some more guys. Obviously, I haven't, there's not enough all 22 out there for me to say I can guarantee an exact study on Forbes or Smith yet. Like it's easier to restudy after you see the intricacies of someone's game from non all 22 but I mean when I really want to dig into it that's why you see unscouted there so there you guys go see I'm I'm 100% open to showing you guys who I know and who I don't um, of course you guys can't see it because I just crop it so you guys don't need to see a bunch of white on the side but I wanted to let you guys know who has an official grade and who does not everybody else there does so let's get right into the mock draft right here uh, number 32 overall <sighs> we already drafted Bryce Young and Henry Teotio. Let's fix this bullshit with Antonio Johnson. You need to have a true difference maker. Him as a Swiss Army knife is a must. He has been everywhere. He can play every position. I think he can play boundary. As a late first corner, I think that he'd be perfectly fine. But we're here. He's a really damn good player. Uh, so Quinn Johnson and Will Anderson are off the board. Obviously, I was hoping for Hendon Hooker to be on the board, but I think if you do want to just say, hey, let's take a shot on Tanner McKee, let's see if we can get a good quarterback, I think that's a very solid option. He's a good commander. Um, I just studied it last night. He has definitely improved his turnover-worthy play to big-time throw ratio. He definitely has improved that, and I like seeing that upward trajectory from a player who really hasn't had that much of an opportunity to be able to start with some very good players. So I honestly am willing to give him a shot here. We're going back to Stanford. It's going to be another battle between Davis Mills and Tanner McKee. And I think this time Tanner McKee wins the starting job for good. We're treating Anthony Richardson like he's returning because I seriously don't think he has any right to come out. Uh, Pittsburgh. So this is my team, obviously. God forbid Broderick Jones. Kill me now. I'm I'm just not even going to talk about it. Jalen Jones is literally my dream pick for them. You know, it's pretty much Javon Foster and then Jalen Jones. Those are my two guys. Um, Javon has a lot of flaws, so I could totally see that not being your guys' favorites, but Jalen Jones, again, 49 yards all season long after letting up 35 or 38, excuse me, in week number one. Um, Or like his first game he played week number three versus uh, the U, but incredible. I think he's played seven, six or seven games, and he's allowed 11 yards in like minus one of that. So it's just, it's awesome. I'm a huge fan. Regardless, uh, pick number 35. Again, I like going after corner for you guys. A position that, like a guy who I might want to get is Tyreek Stevenson here. He feels very similar to how I graded Tyson Campbell. He's had his issues for sure, but I do just see those flashes. I think he's incredible. Uh, For me, I think that is definitely worth the selection for me says D plus they can kiss my ass cheeks Garrett Williams would have been a better selection if he did not injure himself for the year so RIP to that 
regardless, uh, we're looking right now at the Panthers. And thank you guys so much for reminding me that Bradley Bozeman is the center after Elf Line is out. I don't really feel the need to go after offensive line anymore, but there are some god-tier edges here. And I think Felix Anu DK Uzama just fits better than everybody. I would like I want to change it up. I always go Jared Verse. Um, but Felix is 10 pounds heavier. He has like every single week this dude's putting up a ton of pressures and he looks phenomenal. He's improved himself this year, so I am definitely gonna be going after Felix Anu DK Uzama. Pick number 37. So uh, again, this could have been a quarterback selection. Still could be, but I don't really know who else I would take except Cam Ward, and I'm not really willing to go there just yet. I think offensive line is a great place to go. Olu Fashanu is super raw, so you can mold him, but I am actually going to go. So you guys pointed this out. He is down here at 294, um, my boy Javon Foster. It's a good selection. He's a really damn good player, top 10 on my board, as you guys saw. Uh, he's just improved over the year. I'm a big fan. Like He's shown some issues, but he's improved week after week after week, and he's shown that in his production versus high-level teams. I don't like the fact that he continues letting up a pressure a game, but the fact is you see that he's been able to play like 99% of his reps at an extremely high level, where before he was playing like 95, and I love that because if that continues, then you're going to see somebody who could be in the NFL for a long time. New Orleans, let's just... Let's just cancel out the uh, Trevor Penning pick right now. Let's go Olu Fashanu. I wish. I really do. I don't like. I didn't like Trevor Penning before. Everybody knew that, and still not a fan. A quarterback got to be the move, though. Again, I was considering Cam Ward before, but this team just fits Cam Ward so much better. Like it really does. Like you're able to make Taysom Hill look like he belongs on a roster, and he's kind of the combination of Jameis and Taysom Hill. I really do like that upside. Uh, pick number 39 for the uh, Brownies. So defensive line certainly is in the mix. I like Will McDonald, but I also like my number, I think he's number seven overall player, who is also around that 300 mark, Isaiah McGuire. Again, this guy's an absolute freak. He just put up seven pressures versus Vanderbilt. I think he just put up three pressures last week. He puts up multiple pressures every single week, and I love that consistency from him. Pick number 40, Seattle, where we've already busted out on two of our picks here, but don't worry, we shall retain a supremacy here. I think offensive line is going to be the best move for the team. Osiris Torrance fits very well, but I want to get John Michael Schmitz here, who has done a phenomenal job holding down the fort there for Minnesota. Uh, pick number 41, I do that every time, don't I? I totally screw over the Steelers as well as the Cardinals. But offensive line is going to be the place I go to. Andrew Voorhees is a great option for them. Uh, pick number 42 for the Steelers. I mean, Osiris Torrance would be a fun option. Really good run blocker. Fits the Steelers mantra. Uh, but let's look at other positions. So defensive line, uh, I do think we could go after another edge rusher. I know we were pretty fine there, but... We do have some guys who I still have in the top 20 on the board. It's really good value. Uh, we could, I mean, running back isn't impossible to target here. Uh, honestly, it, it's down to defensive line and then offensive line. I think that's the best place to go. And the drop-off after Osiris Torrance is pretty large. I know we guys showed some love to Steve Avila here. He's been doing very well. But Osiris Torrance is going to be the guy for me. Just get some actual nasty run blockers up in there. I know we've invested a lot in that offensive line, but I think you just need to continue throwing shit at a wall until it sticks. And Osiris Torrance certainly is the type of guy where I think that he can make a good impact. Michael Myers still on the board, and we're doing the same old, same old for uh, the Packers. I don't think that this wouldn't be a bad option for a tight end for the Buccaneers either. And Sam Laporte is on the board. Uh, to me, he's the only first-round quality tight end, so that's where we're going to go. The Rams, God knows that they need everything. They decide not to trade Cam Akers, which is cool. But um, offensive tackle with Olu Fashandu is excellent value, and I think that's a good place to go. You have the Indianapolis Colts. It's another position where I would want to go after an offensive tackle. And Darnell Wright's on the board. I'm absolutely taking him. He has left and right tackle versatility. So um, for me, I think that's the best route. And I do apologize about the mock draft simulator. I would just love for it to be the draft network. But 
at the moment we have to settle and it's not awful it just doesn't look good and i know a lot of people really like it but like after you use like the best for such a long time you start realizing what you're missing like you don't realize what you have until you don't have it and i'm feeling it a little bit i'm feeling it regardless pick number 47 for the patriots wide receiver i think is a very good option god god help us um i think that there's a plethora of dudes who are ballers on the board I do love Isaiah or Xavier Hutchinson. I love him. And he's a he's probably the next best guy who's on the board. Uh, shout out to Trey Palmer. He's been doing a very good job. I'm watching Tank Dell in person this weekend versus SMU. So pony up. Um, I mean, I did not know Julian Fleming was able to come out this year. I don't think he is. I have a weird feeling that this mock draft simulator is just complete butt cheeks. But for me, I'm going to go Xavier Hutchinson here. You know, again, this guy is literally the whole entire Iowa State offense. The only reason they can compete. He dropped one ball that was a game winner. Besides that, he's pretty much bailed out his team every single catch he's made. Uh, pick number 48, Washington. Uh, for them, offensive line certainly is a position I want to go after. But corner, you got to start looking at corner too, man. You have to start doing it. Eli Ricks, this is a good range for him to potentially go because, you know, he hasn't played many reps this year. The guy is absolute lockdown. He's a first-round caliber corner. It's just weird to not see him get reps. Pick number 49, the Bengals after going Cam Smith. Ooh, I mean, we could definitely go after another tight end here. I do like Jaheim Bell to this squad. I don't really know many other positions. Maybe linebacker wouldn't be bad at all. And I do like Jack Campbell. I like Drew Sanders. I'm going to go Drew Sanders here. I don't need to defend my pick. You guys know, Drew Sanders is a beast. Excuse me, for Carolina, running back is a high-value position, and I'm going to go Deuce Vaughn here. I really do think that he could be that Christian McCaffrey-level player. I'm a huge fan. Pick number 51. I know I think you just got Fabian Moreau from the Chiefs, so it's nice that you guys have something there, but we do have guys like Garrett Williams on the board, and I'd be willing to say, hey, you might not pl- like immediately play. He probably should be good for his pro day, though, but you might not immediately play but you're totally worth the long-term investment. He is a top 20 player on my board. Pick number 52 for the Chargers. I think offensive line or linebacker is crucial. Jack Campbell, Noah Sewell, both of them really damn good players. Um, Hopper is really good. Jacoby Winman, really good. Uh, I chose Jacoby Winman in the first round of my last draft because I just love his upside. And honestly, given the guys there, I'm going to continue doing that. But this spot here, I mean... We're going to go Jack Campbell because I love his leadership capabilities, but you can't go wrong. Uh, 54, this is another good spot for a linebacker, man. We're going to be going like all linebacker right here, Noah Sewell. And then number 55, another spot where a linebacker could be taken, but we're not going to do that. Uh, so Seahawks, we've gone offensive line. Just let's let's forget that pick happened. And we've gone defensive and uh, let, let's go edge. I like B.J. Ojolari, another one of my players in my top 32. Big fan there. Uh, For the Bears, a guy who fits a very similar mold to Robert Quinn is Andre Carter, 6'7", 265 pounds. So guys show some love there. The Chiefs, I I might have to take Jared Verse as well. Like he, there's no way. He's in my top 10. He just doesn't fit most of these teams. He doesn't fit this team either. But, I mean, he's just so good. Like, isn't he? He's just a beast. Uh, but I do like to, this is one of my favorite picks for the team. Again, I love Will McDonald too. It sucks. It sucks just to see him go right here. Uh, but Tyler Davis, I mean, there's Kalijah Kansi here who's putting up seven pressures every damn game. Got to show him some love too sometime, but it's tough. It's really tough, guys. Uh, pick number 58, I do think tight end could be in the works here. I do know that, you know, Daniel Bellinger looks good, and that's awesome. I'm happy for you guys. Don't think that's the long-term answer, but... For me, Clark Phillips is still here. He's somebody who is an excellent value and an excellent player. Pick number 59 for the Cowboys. Again, wide receiver. We got somebody in the chat loving Eli Hicks, Elijah Hicks. And I want to see where he's at. Um, uh, Elijah, I, I don't know if it's Elijah Hicks. He said Hicks, but it might be Higgins. But regardless, I would still heavily consider it. Now, I still want to develop the offensive line. And... Uh, I know Luke Whipler has a lot of hype to him, and I might want to just show a little bit of that love right now. 
because he he's top 50 on PFF's big board. And usually they're pretty solid on offensive line. They're not ever like bad necessarily. So uh, Whipler is certainly somebody who I would love to have. He's a center. So you could probably put him center or guard. That's probably going to be the best value for me. Build through the offensive line. You'd have to just develop like your identity is a run game essentially. And then Dak and either way, you should probably want to protect him. So being able to have that value is certainly good. Pick number 60. I would, again, want to go offensive line for the Tennessee Titans, but I don't know if there's good enough value here. And looking at it, I'm not seeing it. Like, Robert Scott's the next dude, and I'm not going to take him in the second. I just don't think that's worth it. And I'm seeing if there's anything egregious down here where it's like, oh, shit, forgot about this guy. Don't think so. Don't think so at all. Uh, we'll scroll down my my big board as well. So, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of dudes on here who have not been taken. But I wanted to show you guys a little bit more of it because nobody has seen down into the 70s just yet. And you guys can see Isaiah Foskey. And I'm being very generous putting him there, to be blunt, based on his grade. But, I mean, Jared versus here, I'm just going to go BPA. You might as well just go BPA at this point. Detroit's on the board. I think getting a larger edge rusher would not be a bad idea. That being said, I don't see anybody who I'm exactly jumping over the moon for, especially at that size. So... Let's look at defensive interior. There's still Will McDonald on the board too, which is ridiculous. But um, Kalijah Cansey, he's it's really light, so you could put him on the edge. But his amount of pressures he made this year certainly is worth trying to at least help this defense out a little bit. The Buffalo Bills are on the board. And for the Bills, we've already gone after a safety. Uh, running back, I mean, isn't Blake Corum here? He's been an absolute baller. He's a great player. And then the Eagles sitting here at this spot. Corner is a must. And there are some really good ones. Uh, and I I really do like the idea of potentially getting Emmanuel Forbes and just trying to see if he can work in this zone scheme. His field instinct and his ball skills are just top tier. So as a late second, I totally think it's worth it. Pick number 64. So that is the end, but we'll just have a little bit of fun here and draft somebody um, that I want to love. That's Chris Avon Strain. But that's going to be the draft, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting me as always. See you on the far side. Peace.